Yo, it's Ivor. Training, it is such a contentious topic, and there are a ton of scientific studies out there about different training methodologies, and even more opinions about what those studies are trying to tell you. And on top of that, you've got Zwift, Sufferfest, Trainer Road, and Private Coaches. So how do you pick? In this video, we'll go through all of that, and by the end of it, hopefully, we'll have figured out how to get you on the best training plan for you. So stick around. So, like I said, training is really complex, and I want to get into a little bit why the studies out there seem like they might be contradictory. And part of that is because the human body is really complex and really hard to study. But to really get into this, we're going to have to take a trip to the Nerd Zone. Nerd Zone! Welcome to the Nerd Zone. All right, it's just another camera angle and I'm wearing glasses and a button down, but this is important, so stay with me. We need to talk about correlation and causation. The human body is really complex and it's really hard to study effectively. Many of the studies out there are very short term and narrow scope. And the best that we can hope to do is draw a correlation between an input or an action and an outcome. But that isn't necessarily the same thing as saying that the input or action caused the outcome. I'll link some of these studies down below, but there are a ton of studies out there linking good oral health and flossing to increased life expectancy. So if you take a look at this study in particular, it tells you straight out that the cause is likely not flossing. What's more likely the case is that the traits present in someone who takes good care of their mouth and does things that are annoying like flossing are likely the same traits that lead to doing more things that are beneficial for your health and wellness, and that leads to better life expectancy. However, you'll find tons of articles all over the internet with the headline, Flossing will make you live longer. If you want to live longer, floss. And that's just not the same thing. That's just not what the study is saying. So as a relevant personal anecdote, about three years ago, I had high blood pressure and I really wanted to avoid going on medication. So I eliminated animal products from my diet because I had read that that might work. And the good news is it did. My blood pressure dropped from 138 over 80 to 116 over 60. The great news is that my FTP went up 50 watts. Now, if you listen to the documentary, The Game Changers, they will tell you that the reason for this is because of the plant-based diet. I, however, am skeptical that the cause was the diet. While it's entirely fair to say that the only thing that changed was the elimination of animal products from my diet, I don't think the removal of animal products was the cause. When I stopped eating animal products, those calories still had to come from somewhere, and that somewhere came from plants, which are carbohydrate my macronutrient balance shifted significantly in favor of a high carb diet. And there are lots of studies out there that show a link between high carb diets and increased aerobic performance. So I think it's entirely more likely that the increase in carbohydrate in my diet is what was responsible for the increase in FTP and not the removal of animal products. So what does all this have to do with training and picking a training plan? The same concept applies to scientific research about training that does about oral hygiene and longevity and plant-based diets and FTP. Many of the studies out there on training methodologies are similarly short-term and similarly narrow-focused. Many of these studies simply provide a link between an action and an outcome and not necessarily a cause. So that is to say, doing this thing is linked to this outcome, but it doesn't necessarily cause this outcome. All right, that was exciting. Thanks for indulging me on this trip to the nerd zone. Science is hard, but that doesn't mean we should throw out all the studies. In fact, we can learn quite a lot from them, both from the individual studies themselves and with those studies as part of meta-analyses. But if you're going to base your actions on scientific research, you should read more than just the abstract. You need to dig into the methodology to determine if the research that took place is applicable to your use case and your scenario. But fortunately, there are ways that we can get to great training without having to geek out on all of these research studies. We can employ a tactic used by the tech industry called launch and iterate. The most effective training program for you is going to be the one that you actually do and that you actually stick to. Consistency and compliance will take you really, really far. Once you're on a plan and working through that plan consistently, nailing the workouts, 
Then you can assess where you are and see what needs to be changed. Okay, I hear you say, I still need to pick a plan. Fair, there are several platforms to choose from and we're going to talk about Zwift, the training plans there, the Supperfest training plans, the Trainer Road training plans, and we'll also talk about private coaches. Each of these platforms have their strengths and weaknesses, and each person is going to respond both physically and psychologically to different training. Sufferfest has live race footage, and they dump you in there as though you're part of the race, and that can be highly motivating for some people. Sufferfest also has customized training plans. Some people really love riding around in Zwift's virtual worlds. They've got an artistic rendering now of France and Paris and the Champs-Élysées. They've got their own virtual island of Watopia. They've got the London World's Course. They've got the Richmond World's Course. Lots of things to choose from. In addition to the training plans, Zwift also has racing and just the ability to free ride in their virtual worlds. And again, people love this. Trainer Road has the bring your own entertainment perspective. And this is what works best for me. They've got the blue bars that everyone seems to complain about. But for me, I think that's great because I can squish those blue bars down to the very bottom of the screen and then fill up the rest of my screen with whatever I want. So for the athletes that I work with, the plans that tend to work the best share some similar traits. And that's that they are periodized, and progressive. Periodized plans work different energy systems at different times. And I'll talk mostly here about Trainer Road because it's the platform that I'm most familiar with. Trainer Road's plans have a base phase, a build phase, and a specialty phase. And this is what I mean by periodization. So in the base phase, you're mostly working on aerobic fitness and building that engine. The build phase works on building your muscle endurance and also a little bit of building up that high-end power by starting to introduce some VO2 max and a little bit of anaerobic effort. And by the time you get the specialty phase, you're really starting to use that fitness that you've built, honing it and building up your anaerobic repeatability, getting ready for the event that you're trying to do. One of the things that I really like about the trainer road specialty plans is that they are very specific. So if you get a rolling road race specialty plan, that's going to look a lot different from a criterium specialty plan or a 40K TT specialty plan or an Ironman specialty plan. And so what do I mean by progressive? Well, let's talk about the base phase, for example. Trainer Road's most popular base programs are Sweet Spot Base. And at the beginning of the base phase in Sweet Spot Base, you might have six minute to 10 minute uh, Sweet Spot intervals. And as the phase progresses, those intervals go out to 20 minute and 30 minute intervals. When you get to the build phase, the VO2 max intervals might be three or four minutes, but by the end of the build phase, maybe they're four to five minutes, but they're probably also higher intensity. The same thing happens in the specialty phase. You're working your anaerobic repeatability. You might start with uh, 30 second, 45 second, and one minute intervals. By the end of that specialty phase, you're working at one, two, and three minute intervals and at higher power. The idea here is that you're progressively overloading your systems and your body compensates for that by rebuilding itself stronger. So any of these platforms can do all of those things. The training plans on Zwift can be periodized if you choose them that way, and they are all progressive. The training plans on Sufferfest that I've seen anyway are both periodized and progressive, and the training plans for Trainer Road are periodized and progressive. A private coach, while significantly more expensive, may be able to come up with a very specifically tailored plan to your individual needs. Maybe you need more recovery, maybe you like to ride more and you're not willing to give that up, but you still wanna get fitter and faster uh, and you need to figure out a way to do that that the other platforms just aren't going to do. I don't know, there are, there are definitely advantages for having a private coach. That's why they cost so much. For me though, I use Trainer Road because it checks all of my boxes. The training plans are periodized, they're progressive. It allows me to assess how my training is going because they regularly prescribe fitness assessments, whether it is their ramp test or the eight minute FTP test or the 20 minute FTP test. And even inside of that, because of the way they structure their programs, I can see week over week how I'm doing. Most of the time, every Tuesday, the workout looks kind of similar. And every Thursday, the workout looks kind of similar. And the weekends look kind of similar. So week over week, if I am feeling good or bad, or if things start to change in one way or another, I can reassess and try to figure out what's going on if there are any changes that I need to make. So while we're on the topic of trainer road training plans, I think we need to talk about volume. And yes, you, I'm, I'm talking to you, no, yeah, you, with the really crazy expensive kit, arrow everything and double fisting isotonic energy gels and recovery shake.
You don't know me. Know you? Bro, I am you. I was commuting 90 miles round trip for years, every day. I did 15,000 miles a year for like three years in a row. And on top of that, I was trying to train. And yeah, I burned out. I thought, no, that doesn't apply to me. I can clearly recover from this. I'm doing like 1,200 TSS a week, 1,500 TSS a week. It's all good. But not all TSS is created equal. Even if you're putting up huge TSS numbers every week and riding a ton, if you're not used to structured training, it is hard. It is hard physically, it is hard mentally, it's hard emotionally. It takes a lot of time and energy to do a training plan well. I recommend that everyone, regardless of how much riding experience you have, start with a low volume training plan where you're only doing intervals two to three days a week. They're low volume plans, like I said, they're three days per week, and those can be pretty hard, particularly if you are new to training. Even in sweet spot base, sweet spot training isn't really physiologically that hard, but if you're not used to putting out a lot of power consistently, and particularly on the trainer, it's gonna take a little bit of getting used to. So it's way better to nail every workout and every interval in a low volume training plan, and then maybe add a little extra riding on the side than it is to sign up for a mid or a high volume plan and then try to do whatever riding you're going to do and then start failing workouts or skipping workouts because you're tired or you're not motivated. That is what leads to burnout. So I can't stress this enough, low volume. And yes, I know I use a high volume plan right now, but I didn't when I started. But if you're going to use Trainer Road, I would highly recommend using their plan builder. It allows you to enter in an event. If you don't have an event, you can tell it, I don't have an event. And you can just tell it what type of rider you are and what you like to do. And it'll build a plan around the type of riding that you like to do. So it's really easy to change things up in Trainer Road. I can just very quickly swap out a workout or coming into the next phase, I can change either the type of phase that I wanna do. So whether I wanna go for a general build or a sustained power build or a short power build, I can change that on the fly. And I can also change the volume that I wanna train. If I've got something coming up where I know I'm not going to have the time to do the work and do the recovery, I can very quickly drop my high volume build phase down to a mid volume build phase in the calendar. And it's very quick and easy to do. And actually one of my favorite features uh, of Trainer Road is the group workouts. I love doing group workouts. Uh, I push myself way harder in those than I do on my own. Maybe it's an ego thing, but I don't wanna bail on an interval when everyone's working just as hard as me and they're not bailing. So no matter what platform you choose, no matter what training plan you choose, the important thing is that you really dig into it, really get invested, and really give it a fair and honest shot. You need to give it the effort both on and off the bike. You wanna make sure that you're hitting your numbers on the bike and you wanna make sure that you are doing everything that you can to recover off the bike. And then after you've been doing that for a little while, then you can assess, are you getting fitter? Are you getting faster? Are you recovering? How do you feel? It's important to be objective when you're trying to assess your training. Are you training consistently? If not, why? The why is really important. Maybe you're bailing workouts because they're too hard. Maybe you're bailing workouts because you just aren't motivated. Maybe you need to work on your nutrition. Maybe you need to sleep more. Maybe you've got too much life stress going on. In any case, there are changes that can be made and you can still move forward. So thanks for watching. I really hope this was informative and helped you out. If you like cycling and training content like this, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And if you hit that bell icon, it'll give you a notification every time I release new content. So drop a comment down below. Let me know what your training platform of choice is and talk to me about your training plans. How are they going? How do you feel? Uh, are you getting fitter? Are you getting faster? Are you getting stronger? Are you moving toward your goals? And if not, maybe we can try to figure out why. I'd love to connect with you on social media. You can hit me up at, at the commutist on Instagram. I hope to hear from you and I'll see you next time.